Okay, we're back. We're working on the Kmart Kawasaki. We're going to work on a fork. We're going to work on the uh, swing arm. And then near the end of the video, we're going to introduce a new bike that we'll be working on. <clears throat> but let's get started on the fork. You probably remember from the other video how the forks are two different lengths, the stem. And I, it's just the way it is. I can't get one to actually fit. So first thing we need to do, I got this one all taped up. I got to knock this little uh, race off. And I got that off. And what I need to do is I need to measure the exact length. So I have five and three quarter to the top and four inch to the bottom. So that's what I need to do in the base. So basically the end of that thread, that's where our new threads need to be. So we're going to do this with a, a split die. So this is a 26 by one thread. And honestly, I don't know if it's metric, not metric, because you would think one, that's not metric, right? I had to get it from England and it's specific for bicycle necks. I didn't have a handle for it because it was an oddball size. So I had to make something out of scrap metal. And these adjustments here, this works to split. So this will spread the die. And these two lock it down in place. So you can spread the die to do your initial threads. And then you tighten the die up. You loosen this one and tighten these two up to make the thread to the correct depth. So we're going to work on that a little bit today. I'm going to get it started. And then I'm going to finish it a little later when I can take my time. Because it's kind of a delicate thing. I don't want to mess up. And then we'll move on to working on the bottom bracket a little. So let me get this clamped in the vise. And I'll, I'll show you the initial threading procedure. So I'm just going to run, I'm going to oil this up first, and I'm going to run the die down. This is uh, industrial cutting, cutting oil. And if you're seeing this, it means I didn't mess the fork up. Whenever you're using a die, you can always see there's a little chamfer that always goes first. Can I see that again? You might not be able to see it. It's just a little edge tapered with no thread. I'm always worried I'm going to mess up the existing threads because I always have plan B in mind and I could cut this and shorten it if I don't mess up the top of this. But I guess we're kind of committed now. Plan A is going to have to work. That's why we taped it all up, right? I'm going to use some regular cutting fluid too. Oil is your friend when doing this kind of thing. I have to die open just a little bit. And we'll see when we hit the plain stuff if it's too tight. I'm going to have to loosen it up a little bit. not liking it. We're going to have to loosen this up a little bit. If you loosen the center one, tighten the
side ones. Now let's tighten them, going the wrong way. Loosen the side ones, tighten the center one. I think we'll come back when I got some threads done and I'll show you a picture with some threads on there. All right, we made it down the whole way with the initial thread. I'm going to fine tune it off camera because I don't want to rush this. I got one shot at it and that's it. But it looks like it's going to be okay. I got the threads all the way down as far as they needed to go. So I'm going to wrap this up for now and then we're going to work on the uh, swing arm from the, from the same bike. I almost hit the camera. So now we're going to work on the swing arm. We're going to get the bottom bracket out. Now these bottom brackets, they're like five little balls in there. It's, it's a really poor design. I'm going to put a regular cartridge bearing in there. I don't have the special wrenches. And this side I can get with a punch. This side, they always get stuck and it needs a special tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this nut on there. And then I can put a wrench right on that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to weld the nut on there. There you go. Comes right off. I'm not going to touch it like I usually do. Because it's pretty... And it's a standard thread. I'm going to put a cartridge bearing in there, but the BSA style stuff would fit right in there. And, um, but we definitely kind of like this style. This is not a good setup. But typical box store. And maybe I'll go stop going backwards. There we go. And that's that. Ready to have a regular bearing put in it. Okay, so this is a bike we're going to be working on. It's a uh, Cannondale. I think it's called an Ultra. 
And the guy that owns it, I've worked, his name's Andy. I've worked with him for 20 plus years. It says Ultra on the fork, so we're not sure. But it's Cannondale, and um, the fork is dead. Our immediate reaction was we were going to put a modern fork on it, but when I looked into it, this is a pretty good design. It's just hard to get parts for it. They're not that reliable, so we're still researching that. We may change it over to disc brakes. The hubs are actually set up for disc, and he might want to do an 11 by 1 drive. So he's had the bike for a long time. It's an older bike. So I can't resist the urge to weigh it because we weigh we weigh everything in this this little shop. So <laughs> let me set it up and then we're gonna weigh it. <clears throat> okay. Can you see it? What does it say? Twenty-eight point five five. Okay. So now we got to subtract the weight. Twenty-eight point five five. Okay, 28.55 minus is 0.11 for the strap, so it's 4.4. 4. 28.44. That's pretty crazy light. They say that fork is only about three and a half pounds, so any modern fork might actually add weight. Most of them are about four and a half pounds, so we'll have to see. We're going to do some research and look farther into it, and when we know what we're doing... You're going to find out.